Holy Spirit, all consuming fire, consume us, Lord. Draw people that are on their way to hell, draw them to you today. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Welcome to the We are in your presence. Tell us what your power get inside. Welcome to the spirit. We are in your presence. Tell us what your power you're the living water, never trying to come to come and our encounter, take complete control, welcome to Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside me. You're the living water. Never trying to tell. Comfort or counselor. Take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside Fill us with your power Live inside Fill us with your power Here I am, 
And I'm gonna worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you. And I'm gonna worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you. And I'm gonna worship you forever. Grab me and your 
got me in your arms. Take me to that place, Lord, to that secret place where I can be with you. You can make me. Yeah. 
to that place, Lord, to that secret place where I can be with you. You can make me like you, wrap me in your arms, wrap me in your arms, wrap me in your
We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. If you're giving by the cash app, just type in Final Awakening. No spaces. Final Awakening. If you want to use PayPal, it's ctkc.net at gmail.com. I imagine my wife would type those things in for those of you that are watching by Facebook or, or YouTube. If you want to use a card, go to our website, darylmcmanus.com. D-A-R-R-E-L-L-M-C-M-A-N-U-S. Dot com. Lord, I just give you praise for who you are. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can we have the shofar sound? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Could you blow the shofar? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let it sound. Let it ring out. Yeah. Give him a shout of praise. can or kneel, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your holy name. You have no equal. You are God and God alone. Amen. Glory to God. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here. We're glad that you are here. Lord, I thank You, Lord. Draw the lost in. Those that are nearest to eternity out here on the beach and around here, draw them out of the kingdom of darkness today into the kingdom of the Son of Your love. The kingdom of light. Holy Spirit, You're here. So I know You'll be convicting and convincing the world of sin. Yes. And show them the Savior. For there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus. No other name. Glory to God. Thank You, Lord. Blessed be Your name. Blessed be Your name, Lord. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, You are holy. Oh, You are holy, Lord. Bless Your holy name. Thank You, Lord. Holy Spirit, I have nothing to say unless You give it. And I have nothing to do unless You show me. So I thank You for giving me the words to say. And I thank You for showing me what to do. Just as Jesus only did what He saw the Father do. Let us see what the Father is doing today. Let us hear what He's saying. Let us say what He's saying. Let us do what He's doing. Hallelujah. Ooh, the fire of God's here. Oh my. Shut up. Thank you for your fire. All consuming fire. The title today, we'll see where this goes, but the title is Never Had a Title Like This Ever in Over 46 Years of Ministry. The False Prophet Test. The False Prophet Test. Everybody say the False Prophet Test. The False Prophet Test. We're living, it's, it's, it's no wonder that in the last few years there's been a, a rise of so-called prophets. 95% of them are no prophets. 
Here no profit. And so you must know the false prophet test. You know that you know the church in, in Ephesus, you no need to turn there. But in the the church in Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2, starting with verse 1, there's one thing that that church had, one of the things that the Lord said they had going for them was that they tested those who say they are apostles. Now, we may touch on apostles if the Holy Spirit wants to do that today because 95% of those that say they're apostles are not. And so you've got to also know the apostle test. There's a test. Paul said there's a test. This must be the day of test. Paul said that there's a test whether or not that you're actually in the faith or not. Whether or not you're going to heaven, there's a test. Most Christians don't even know that test. But, but today, today the Lord is, is it, the, the, the Ephesians church, so they tested those that say they're apostles and they found them to be liars. False. Yeah. Well, now the Lord's saying turn there. That's no surprise. As soon as I say not, the Lord will say yes. Come on. That's all that matters is what He says. Book of Revelation, chapter. Well, let's just start with verse 1. To the angel of the church at Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your work your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear with those who are evil, and, and you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. So, 95% of who you'll come in contact with that have an apostle on their card or their website, or liars. So that means you only have 5% that are part of the sum. That means 95 out of every 100 that say they're apostles, or, or that you will meet. We have a number of ministers here today. One of the call, the, one of the assignments that God has given Cindy and I is to raise up the five that, that we, it don't matter where we're ministering all of a sudden people that are called to be real apostles prophets evangelists pastors teachers they just start showing up in the meeting we don't have to do anything why because it's our assignment yes to train the five percent but it's also our assignment to let you know how to distinguish. Because there's great deception going on in the world right now, especially concerning the office of the prophet. Actually, the apostle and the prophet, but the Lord's somehow is wanting to emphasize the prophet. So, so just say it again. The false prophet test. 
All the prophet tests. Now there's going to arise one during the tribulation after the Antichrist is revealed. The Antichrist will be the world, one world political leader. But there will arise a prophet. Oh Lord. You oh, want me to sorry. start saying this? Oh, yes. Prophet. yes. Come on. Most of the mega church buildings have been built for the one world religion. Yes. And the false prophet, he won't be called false. What will, what will he be called? Prophet. Yes. He will be broadcasting worldwide across the world. And he will definitely be prophesying. So you can be you you can be completely hoodwinked because of somebody's gift. Oh, but it was accurate. That's not the test. No. <laughs> it's not the test. He gets his information by demon power. Through familiar spirits and time travel. The moment somebody and there a lot of the there are very few there are very few quote mega churches that have not compromised. Ninety five percent of them are preaching the false gospel. Yes. And in, in that in that assembly, you'll find m many false apostles yes. and many false prophets, and they, they'll be introduced. And today, prophet so and so will be ministered. But all the while, because the people could not discern between the true and the false, all of the demons in that person went home with all those people. Oh. And marriages started breaking up. There's wife swapping going on in a number of these places. The so-called lead minister is that many of them are addicted to pornography. Now don't get so quiet on me. <laughs> Talk about it. Everybody say again the false prophet test. The false, false prophet, prophet test. test. Right. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. <laughs> Verses 13 and 14. Now here again is some overlap and there will be some overlap with the apostles. 2 Corinthians. Everybody say 2 Corinthians. Chapter 11, chapter 11, starting with verse 13. Paul is writing. Paul is writing to a church that he gave birth to, and because he wasn't there in person, false apostles were trying to take control of the entire church that Paul established. Yes. Yeah. And this is why in this letter of 2 Corinthians, Paul is writing this by the Holy Spirit. For such are false apostles. Everybody say false apostles. False apostles. Deceitful workers. Deceitful. Transforming. Transforming. Well, they, they looked right. I thought the presence of God was there. Just let's look at the word. Transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. It's a false anointing. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's demon spirit.
Verse 14, And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. The devil is not coming at you with a pitchfork. There was a minister one time that was holding some meetings and with a minister with a healing anointing. And during the meeting it concerned him. All kinds of people were getting healed and it was the Lord that was doing it. Except the pastor. Finally, before the meetings concluded, he met with the pastor and said, why don't you let the Lord heal you? He said, it's not God's will to heal me. He said, why? Because one morning my room suddenly lit up. And a being came into the room. It was in a manifestation of light. And said, it's not my will to heal you and disappeared. And all the time I thought it was Christ. He said, let me ask you a question. If I, or if I were to say now, if, now if, if there was a being that appeared in your room and, and said that it's not God's will to save you, he, he said, what would you do? He said, well, well, because I would know that's not right because the Word says, whosoever, whosoever believeth, are you listening? Yes. For God so loved the world He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And He said, well, God says that it's His will to heal you in His Word. And finally, He was able to break the spell of demon power off of that pastor. And the Lord healed him. Lift your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise. There are many pastors that are under false apostles and therefore they are bound. The Lord is showing me this just right now as I'm standing here. He's just telling me this. They're in so-called apostolic network and the main operation of, the, of most of those things is that you pay your dues and give your tithes to us. And we will cover you as an apostle. Anytime anybody says that, immediately they're a false one. You can just write them off and don't ever go where they're at again. Don't ever look at anything on Facebook or any program on TV, forget it. You'll be opening yourself up to demon power. Glory to God. Ah, thank you, Lord. Isn't, it, isn't the sun shine yeah. nice? Yes, thank Amen. you, Father. That is good. Or thank I can you, shed a jacket, actually. Yes. Church on the beach. That's why he clears it out. Amen. 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 Don't look at the weather forecast on whether or not we'll be meeting here. Because our authority is to what? Speak to the storm. Not pray about it. Jesus said that he that believeth on me the works that I do, he will do also in greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. What did, did Jesus ever pray about whether? No. He spoke directly to the storm right. and told it what to do. He said, peace, be still. One translation says, be muzzled. And it stopped. Amplified Classic says it was of hurricane proportions. Wow. And it just arose suddenly while he was asleep. Alright. Alright. 
We covered 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 14, right? Right. All right. Now the Lord wants us to go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And He, with a capital H, is speaking of Jesus. I encourage you to read the entire fourth chapter. But we don't have time to do that today. In your own study. And He Himself gave a whole bunch of apostles. How many, how many apostles did Jesus give? Some. Everybody say some. some. What's some? It means not very many. So we can read it this way. And Jesus Himself did not give very many to stand in the office of apostles. You cannot be an apostle because you print a nice decorative card. The only way you can be an apostle is if Jesus Himself, you cannot be an apostle from a man. There are people going around, oh, we're commissioning all these people to be apostles. It's on Facebook. Watch any meeting where there's very little word and a lot of storytelling about what that person has claimed to see in some dream or vision. Paul did not tell Timothy, tell all of your supernatural stories. No, he said, preach the Word. He said, preach the Word. Preach the Word. Preach the Word. Anybody that's in any of these offices, the first thing they will be doing is preaching the Word. And if the Word of God is not being preached, get out of there. Yes. Because, right. oh, there was, there was moving us of the Spirit in gifts. Get out of there. Without the Word of God, there's nothing to test the prophecy. That's right. As a matter of fact, in a matter of fact, the Lord's telling me to do this right now. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 29. Let and there's all kind of order. I'm finishing up my books, my book on God's power tools, which is a in-depth manual on the operation of the nine manifestation gifts of the Holy Spirit. And a whole chapter will be on women in the ministry. So just be agreeing with me that I can finish that up so I can get on to the next book it's time to travail. It's time to travail. The Lord showed me the cover when I was in deep travail. He showed me the cover. And in that book will also be a detailed operation of a supernatural church in God's order. What happens when somebody has a tongue in the, in the meeting? What happens if a second person gets a tongue in the meeting? What happens if a third person gets a tongue in the meeting? All the instruction is in here. But the Lord wants us looking at verse 29 right now. So let two or three prophets, not people who prophesy, everybody is tell to covet to prophesy that's that's not there's no word of wisdom or word of knowledge in that the simple gift of prophecy 
is he that prophesies speaking of the men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. There's no revelation in that. But in the office of the prophet, there is the vocal gifts with the revelation gifts, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. And they're not operating once in a while. At least two of those revelation gifts will be in operation every time that man or woman ministers. But the very first thing he or she should be doing is preaching the Word. And the Lord has me as one of His apostles, not by my own choosing, to correct the error in the body of Christ this morning. Yes. Yes. Let, the, let two or three prophets speak. What's the very next thing that's to happen? Let and let the others run with it and say, Thank you, Lord. No. 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 Wow, I got a great word. What kind of word did it did he or she give you in the meeting? Oh, well listen to what I got. Oh, United States of America, how you have fallen into error. Let the others judge. How are you going to judge if you don't know the Word? That's the standard. Judge it by what? All right. And he back to Ephesians four eleven. You didn't forget that, did you? And he himself gave some. Everybody say some to be apostles. Some. Some prophets. Everybody say some prophets. Some prophets. Some evangelists. Some evangelists. And some pastors. Some pastors. And teachers. There's not very many that Jesus set in the offices. Now, you can't put yourself in the ministry. You say, where is that Scripture? Look at 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. Turn there. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 says, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me because He counted me faithful putting me into the ministry. Who puts one into one of the offices? Jesus! Jesus. Nobody else. All right. Now, I have no idea. We'll see where this goes. Lord, you know I, I have nothing to say unless you give it. Nothing to do unless you show me. First John chapter 4. Turn there, please. Starting with verse 1. I happen to be uh, in the Amplified Classic right now. I use different translations. So I'm in the Amplified Classic right now. I like that better than the, ampli the new Amplified 2015 version. Abbreviation AMPC, Amplified Classic. Beloved, do not put faith in every spirit. Oh, but it was a spiritual meeting. Everybody say, Beloved. Beloved, do not put faith. Do not put faith in every spirit. In every spirit. The Lord wants it repeated again. Beloved, Beloved. Do, not do not put faith, put faith. In, every spirit, in every spirit. But prove, prove. 
test. See the Amplified Classic in parentheses, it says test. That's what prove means. In other words, give them the test. Don't you dare believe every spirit. You must give them the test, but you cannot give them the test if you do not know the test. Amen? Prove, test the spirits to discover whether they proceed from God. For many false prophets how many of them are false? 95%. Many. Everybody say many. Many. They, we, they got prophetic they, people trying to get me in some prophetic group. No. No, I'm not a part of a prophetic group. Because 95% of it's going to be wrong. And I, and I don't have time for anything wrong. It's the last hour. The coming of the Lord is upon us. And there will be this great final awakening that will usher in the coming of the Lord. And that's why God is raising up travailers. And he wanted me to put it in the book for him. It's time to travail. Did you know that the Scripture when Jesus was preaching about the last days talks about travail coming on the earth at, as one of the signs? Yes. Now God is raising up travailers. Amen. There's a group that God's forming and, and and the Lord and, and and I call it the travailers because you can't be a part of it unless you travail in the spirit. But no, you won't find it on Facebook. Good. Beloved, do not put faith in every spirit, but prove, test the spirits to discover whether they proceed from God. For many false prophets have gone forth into the world. Alright. By this you may know, perceive, and recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit which acknowledges and confesses the fact that Jesus Christ the Messiah actually has become man and has come in the flesh is of God, has, has God for its source. For every spirit who does not acknowledge and confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, but would annul, destroy, sever, disunite Him, is not of God. Does not proceed from Him. This non-confession is the spirit of Antichrist. In other words, well, they're not saying anything about Jesus. Get out of this. Because it's a non-confession. That's why I love the Amplified Classic here. This non-confession is the spirit of the Antichrist of which you heard that it was coming and now it is already in the world. Little children, you are of God. You belong to Him and have already defeated and overcome the agents of the Antichrist because He who lives in you is greater, mightier than He who is in the world. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They proceed from the world and are of the world. Oh, okay. It's coming from the world. Exactly. Most places with church on them, you're going to find the spirit of Antichrist is there in the building. The world, what's happened is the so called, oh Lord, 
Oh, yes, he's, he's telling me stuff right yes, now. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All right. What's happened? What's happened is the last, the last major revival that impacted the United States of America happened in the early 1900s. The Azusa Street Revival. Oh, but there were great revivals here. Yeah, I don't doubt that. But they didn't change the nation. Have you ever you look at the nation? It's gotten worse. It did not change the United States of America. My ministerial Pentecostal roots come from Azusa Street. There'll be there'll be my 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 great grandmother Maria Etta Thornton French ha, ha, was 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 lost on, on my mom's side, my mom's grandmother, my great grandmother. She was a tall, a tall, stately woman. Her detailed testimony will be maybe even in her picture. It will be in this book on women in the ministry. She didn't know Jesus. Her leg was froze. One leg couldn't. So she was in terrible shape. Somebody invited her to a, to a meeting. Because by the time when William Seymour and, uh, and, and Brother Parham and all, when that wave came out of Los Angeles and it swept across. Matter of fact, 80% of all missions today came from Azusa Street. You can trace it back. Because we haven't had any move of God. And as great as it was, it wasn't an awakening. This, this country, the United States of America, has only had two awakenings. An awakening is greater than a revival. But this was a great revival. That's the last time that this nation has been visited by a sovereign move of God. And so, but that wave swept across, it went from the west coast to the east coast, that wave, revival wave. And when it got to East Texas, in the, the city of Trinity, Texas, where my great-grandmother was living, Somebody invited her to a meeting. And the Lord healed her leg instantly. She came to Jesus. She was baptized in the Holy Ghost, spoke with other tongues, had a vision of Jesus, and Jesus called her to preach. Yes. I am I am I am fourth gener double fourth generational Azusa Street Pentecostal ministerial background in my lineage. But that means nothing unless I'm in it. Yes. Right now. Right. Yes. And there are many that have taken over ministries and churches where their father or their parents were following the Holy Spirit. And they're in trouble of divine judgment even as I'm speaking yes. because they have shut it down. It doesn't look good on camera to have demons coming out. We won't do that no more. No more speaking in tongues. And so all you have is a nice one, two, three, feel good message. You can come in a center and feel good about it and be ready to go conquer the week again and never even know that you're lost. Preach it. Because when the Holy Spirit is present, the very first thing Jesus said He would do is not help us. It's to convict and convince the world of sin. And if sinners aren't being convicted in the meeting, the Holy Spirit is there. Well, I felt the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. It was spirit, all right. It was spirits that came straight from Satan. Yep. And you don't have enough word in you to even tell the difference. 
How did this happen? If you want to, if, if you wanted, I'm not saying for anybody to go kill a frog. I'm just using this as an illustration, okay? You gotta, you gotta qualify all this kind of stuff now because people will say, Brother Daryl said. No, Brother Daryl didn't say. Okay? But if you were to kill a frog in hot boiling water, you would, you would just take the frog and put him in the hot boiling water. But that's not what the devil has done. He has slowly, ever so slowly raised the temperature this year by about two to three degrees. And the next year raised it about five degrees. This has been years in the making, the condition of the United yes. States of America. Tone that down. We don't like that anymore. Oh, no, don't, 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 no, no, no moving of the spirit now because we, it won't fit into our 30 minute television program. The, the so called church has looked to Hollywood yes. instead of to God. Right. We have to have the best smoke machine. We've got to have the best moving lights. We've got to be entertaining these youth now in their own youth service because they're, they're used to video games. I want to tell you, in the early church in the book of Acts, the Spirit of God was moving so powerfully. And there was great grace on that church. Great Grace is not a covering. Grace is a person. And Hebrews 10, 9, 29 says, that He's the Spirit of grace and that you have insulted the Spirit of grace. Read the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews. I don't have time to read it this morning. Grace is not a something. It's a someone. Yes. And if the someone is there, you cannot be born again because Jesus said that which is born of the Spirit. Who's this Holy Spirit? The Spirit of grace is your Spirit. Read the 3rd chapter of John. I don't have time to read it this morning. And so if the Holy Spirit is there, no one can be born again because when they're born again, your spirit is born of the Holy Spirit. And if He's not there, you just filled out a decision card. That's why you can't find those people again. That's why there's no change in their life. Because instead of finding Christ, instead of finding the Spirit of the Lord, they entered a glorified social club. And that's all the meeting is without the Holy Spirit. Let's make them feel comfortable. Let them have as many cups of coffee as possible. They made every, you've made everybody comfortable except God! Three keys to the ministry. Everybody say three keys to the ministry. Three keys, three keys to, the to the ministry. Everybody say, welcome the Holy Spirit. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Number two, say, make the Holy Spirit comfortable. Make Holy Spirit comfortable. Number three, do whatever He says. Do whatever That's it. He says. That's it. We've welcomed the Holy Spirit on Galveston Island today. We've made Him comfortable. And now, I'm doing whatever He says. Saying whatever He's telling me to say. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't have church. Right. Ooh, the fire of God's here. Ooh. Oh, He's drawing people right now. Drawing him on this island. Yes, he is. Drawing people. Drawing people. Thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You 
you don't need to entertain young people. The Holy Spirit reminded me where He had me in the, the end of the fourth chapter of the book of Acts. You don't need to turn there. I'm just telling you where we're at right now. We're heading toward the end of the fourth chapter of the book of Acts and it says great grace was on the church. What does that mean? There was a great move of the Spirit of grace on the church. And just a few verses later is Acts chapter 5 and 5 is God's number for grace. The fivefold ministry is God's grace on the church. Yes, it is. From His hand. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. When we get to the fifth chapter of the book of Acts, there was such a manifestation of the Spirit of grace. People were, people were just selling properties, extra properties they had, and just laying the money. You didn't have to get counters and all that. And then and, and there's all kind of ministries now where somebody was embezzling the money. Years. I have an uncle in the ministry and one of the ushers was embezzling money but he couldn't find out who it was. And so he hired a detective yeah. in, the, in the room where the money is counted and the detective was up in the ceiling and the detective found a person embezzling all of that loose cash money when the holy spirit is there you don't need that because if anybody is lying about the offering you're bringing <laughs> they drop dead Whew. At whose feet? The apostles' feet. Yes. Because they laid the money at the apostles' feet. Yes. And 95% of them are not God's apostles. Laid at the apostles' feet. And so Ananias thinks he's got over on everybody. He sold the land. He didn't have to sell the land. And he came and laid money down, giving the impression that it was all the money. There was nothing wrong with him keeping some money back. And you can't get by with anything when the Spirit of grace is present. <laughs> the Holy Spirit showed the Apostle through a word of knowledge. Who has filled your heart to tempt God? You've not lied to man, but to the Holy Ghost. And he dropped dead at the apostle Peter's feet. And guess what the youth ministry was? Guess what the youth ministry was? of the day. The youth ministry that says the young men of the church. You read the fifth chapter yes. of Acts in your own time. Yes, yes. The young men of the church buried the man who dropped dead because he lied to the Holy Spirit. You don't need any moving lights and fog machine when there's that kind of power in the church. Lift your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise. Woo! Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Three hours Hallelujah. later, the wife came in and God was merciful to her, gave her, gave her an opportunity to come clean. Yes. Did you sell the land for this much? And she didn't know that her husband's already dead and buried. And she said yes. And he said, the feet of those that that buried your husband are at the door. And guess what? The young men of the church came again. Looks like that had been happening. Yes. The youth were on ready. Yes. Wow. Yes. Buried her. Yes. And did the church shrink? No. It says that after that there was great multiplication 
Why? Because the fear of the Lord was on the church. And God is restoring the fire of the fear of the Lord. And He's actually restoring it even right now as, I'm, as He has me preaching. And He majors in the fire of the fear of the Lord. to God. Alright. The Lord wants us to get back to this uh, this original text. Glory to God. This one. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. Here it is. You didn't forget about 1 John chapter 1, did you? Verse 5. They proceed from the world. That's where, that's where the Lord had us. Now the Lord's bringing all this around to get this point across. I don't know where we're going except what He tells me to say. This is the point He wants to get across today. They proceed from the world. The world is in the church. Because the Holy Spirit is not there. And so these 95% of these congregations, the world is in the church because they've looked to the world, to Hollywood, to, to movie stars that can memorize a part and can act, but they can't live. They don't know how to live. All they know how to do is to play a part. And so the church... Because there's nothing happening in the church, the church has gone to the world and to secular uh, concerts, even demonic concerts, yes. to see what they're doing to attract the young people. And so they brought all of those demons into what was the house of God. And the water, the temperature has steadily been rising until now the, those congregations, they die. And they don't even know they're dead. They died and they don't even know they're dead. Let me get, let me get closer. Looks like the, let me get closer to the Facebook. They died. Everybody say they died. they died. And don't know they're dead. Don't know they're dead. Say it again. They died. They died. There we go. And they don't know they're dead. Don't even know they're dead. They proceed from the world and are of the world. Therefore, it is out of the world. It's its whole economy, morally considered that they speak and the world listens, pays attention to them. We are children of God. Say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Whoever is learning to know God progressively, to perceive, recognize, and understand God by observation and experience, and to get an ever clearer knowledge of Him, listens to us. And he who is not of God does not listen or pay attention to us. By this, we know, recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now He's going to just begin. Evidently, God's going to want us to continue on this. Amen. Because I, I, I've, just, I've just barely got going here. The Holy Spirit wanted us to go all in here and to get back to here. But I feel like He's fixing to have us close. Beloved, let us love one another. 
Has he changed subjects? No. He's telling you that if a, a true prophet has the love of Christ, you'll only know them by their fruit. Everybody say, by their fruit. By their fruit. Alright, the Lord says just stop right there. I feel like I've, I've just barely scratched the surface. Just barely scratched the surface. Would you just bow your heads? Glory to God. There's anybody here and you say, you say, Brother Darrell, I'm not sure that I'm ready to meet the Lord. If the Lord were to come back in the next moment, pray for me. I'm not sure that I'm ready to meet the Lord. Remember me in this prayer. If that's you, just simply slip your hand up where you're at. Just slip your hand up right where you're at. Yes. Yes, I see hands. And then there are those that are listening and will listen. You don't know Him. I'm going to pray a prayer right now. And, it, and, and how do I know the new birth is going to take place? Because the Holy Spirit's here. Amen. And so your spirit is going to be born of His Spirit. Yes. And so I'm going to pray. Just repeat this after me, please. Oh God, oh God. I, realize I realize without Jesus, without Jesus I'm, lost. I'm lost. But oh God, oh God. I don't want to die and go to hell. I, don't want to die and go to hell. I want to spend eternity with You. So, oh God, right now, I repent for living a life of sin. I turn away from it. I'm turning to You. I make You my Lord, my Master, my Savior. I say with my mouth, Jesus, Jesus, you're my Lord. You're my Lord. I, believe with my heart, I believe with my heart, not my head, not my head. That, God you from the dead. that God raised you from the dead. Therefore, I'm saved. Therefore, I'm saved. Praise God, I'm saved. Praise God, I'm saved. Say this boldly, Satan, Satan. you're not my Lord anymore. Jesus is my Lord. Praise God, I'm saved. Now give the Lord a shout. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Somebody in the Facebook, please. Glory to God.